Okay, what I want to show here is how we can uh, uh, generate approximations uh, to uh, um, uh, data in MATLAB by using the polyfit approximation. And as an example, what I'm going to do is do approximations of the sine function in terms of a fifth order polynomial using MATLAB. So in order to do that here, I'll begin here in uh, my MATLAB script. And I typically begin scripts by doing CLC and clear, uh, and let's say format compact. I don't do all the time. And the whole idea of these two commands are to clear out any anything that's in the command window. That's what CLC clears out. And then clear clears out all the variables here in the workspace. And when I do that, it prevents variable values from hanging on from one MATLAB script to the next and possibly causing me to get um, bad answers. So that's the way I start my MATLAB script, CLC clear. Um, now what I'm going to do is generate a fifth order polynomial approximation uh, to the function y equals sine x, sine x function. Now, notice that a fifth order polynomial approximation is going to actually have six coefficients in it because you have the coefficient of the fifth, the fourth, the third, the second, and the first polynomial terms plus the constant term or the zero order polynomial term. So the uh, a fifth order polynomial approximation should have six terms in it, six coefficients. And I'm going to generate the approximation to the sine function over x values ranging from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 in x steps of 0 0.01. So that's what this statement means. I go from minus L2 over 2, L2 is pi, up here, and x steps of 0 0.01. This is my array now of x values. I then take that and compute my array of y values, which are values for the sine function, okay, using those x values. Now, if you uh, remember here, let me pull this up, that the sine function from x equals minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 looks something like this right in here, okay? So let's say... Um, a fairly well-behaved function right in that region right there. So now what I uh, uh, am going to do is take these two arrays, my x array and my y array, and I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to plot them out uh, in, uh, in red uh, on a graph. Okay, so I plot out the graph x, y, uh, color red, uh, line with. So that's actually just the plot of the sine of x. Okay, I'll show you that in a moment. Then what I do is I take the values for x and y uh, generated up here, and I generate that plot. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, what I'm polyfit is generating a polynomial fit. And I'm generating a polynomial fit of order, order. So order is five. So I'm telling MATLAB, give me a fifth order polynomial fit to this function, which is the sine function. So I generate that uh, right in here with p equals polyfit. So generate values of the sine function. I plot out that sine function. I produce a polyfit approximation fifth order polynomial. And I'm going to graph that and I'll show you. Uh, now, after I do that, though, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go online and look up actually the McLaurin series expansion, which is the Taylor series expansion uh, around uh, the, the origin. I'm going to do that series expansion for the sign. So if I take the first five terms in that series expansion, that is also a fifth order polynomial approximation to the sine function. And I'm going to compare those two different series expansions. Now, they turn out to be really pretty much identical, and we will see that. But how am I going to do that? Well, if you look up 
the uh, McLaurin series, the Taylor series expansion for the sine, you have something like this. Here is the approximation from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Sine goes from negative 1 to 1. And this is the series expansion for the sine of x, as given by the McLaurin series and or Taylor series. I have sine of x approximately equals x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial and on and on and on. Now notice that all the even terms of the series expansion are zero. There's no constant term. That's order zero. The constant term is zero. The linear term is this term has a coefficient of one. So the first order term or the linear term is x. The second order term, there's no x squared. So the x squared term is zero. The, the coefficient of the x cubed term here is minus 1 over 3 factorial. There's no fourth order term. So the fourth order term has a coefficient of 0. Okay. And uh, then we have that um, uh, the fifth order term has a coefficient of 1 over 5 factorial. Now notice the odd numbered coefficients are not 0. And their sign alternates plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. And all of the even order terms are zero. So I'm going to use this to generate a fifth order approximation to sine of x using MATLAB's symbolic capabilities. So here's what I have here. First, I alternate the sine of the coefficient by first setting the variable sine equal to negative 1. And then as I go through the series, I change negative 1 to plus 1 back to negative 1 again by just taking sine equal to sine times negative 1. So each time through, it changes sine, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, so I have a, a for loop here. And the purpose of the for loop is to generate the coefficients of that Taylor series expansion, the Maclaurin series. So I start, i goes from 1 to order plus 1. Why? Because uh, MATLAB uh, begins the, the constant coefficient will have index 0, and I mean index 1 in MATLAB instead of index 0 as it typically does when you write the representation of the series on a piece of paper. So I'm going from coefficient 1 to coefficient 6, where 1 represents the constant term, 2 is the linear term, 3 is the squared term, uh, i equal 4 is the cubic term. You get the idea, I hope. Then what I do is I set n equal to i minus 1, so that when i is equal to 1, n is 0. So this tells me that n uh, really points to the order of the term in the series. n equals 0 is the constant term, and so on. Now I have this for loop. And the whole purpose now of this for loop is to check uh, uh, that, uh, oh, I, uh, here's the for loop here. Okay, so I have this for loop, and then I generate values of n. I, I check to see if n is even or odd, because I want all of my even terms to have a coefficient of 0. So if the n has... Um, uh, if n is even, I look at the modular value. This is uh, looking at the remainder of n divided by 2. If the remainder of n divided by 2 is 1, I'm looking at an odd value of n. If the remainder of n divided by 2 is 0, I'm looking at an even value of n. So uh, if this is an odd value of n, I switch from the, the, the value of sine from minus the plus or plus the minus using this operation, and I then compute uh, what that coefficient term is. And that coefficient term is either going to be plus or minus divided by the factorial of n. Now, you see that right here. For the odd coefficients in the Taylor series expansion, the odd coefficients go as 1 over 1 factorial, 
negative 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial. The even coefficients are all 0. So I come back here, and this is exactly what I'm producing right here. If that if I have an odd coefficient as produced as indicated by this if statement, I change the sign. I then compute sine divided by n factorial. So 3 factorial, 5 factorial, and so on. If n is even, I just set the value of the coefficient to be 0. Now all of these coefficients, as I produce them in this for loop, are then put into the vector p theory. Okay, so p theory is a vector of coefficients generated from the Taylor series expansion. Now up here in the program, the values of p I got from polyfit, that MATLAB polyfit puts the coefficients in a vector p. So p is what comes out of the polyfit program, and p theory here is the vector of coefficients from the Taylor series expansion. Okay, so I now have two vectors. One is from a numerical curve fitting polyfit. The one is from the Taylor series expansion. So this gives me f print uh, here. I print out the values of those uh, terms. I print out p and p theory right here. Now when I print it out, uh, I run the program, print them out, and I've already done that. So these are these are coming from the polynomial curve fitting routine here. These are coming from the Taylor series expansion. This is um, this is the fifth coefficient of the x to the fifth power. See, it's 0 0.008. x to the fourth power. Both of them give me zero, as I hope they would. This is the cubed coefficient. This is the 1 over 3 factorial term, has a negative sign on it. This is the squared coefficient, and this is the linear term, uh, uh, 1.000. Uh, both, they give me a linear term of 1, again as expected. Okay, now, the next really interesting thing that uh, you can do with MATLAB is that you can use its symbolic function capabilities to actually construct uh, the Taylor series term by term from the series power series expansion. And I do that with this for loop. Now, so I begin, usually if we're summing up a bunch of terms in any computer language, we begin by initializing the variable sum to be zero, and then we one by one will add all the terms to sum to accumulate the sum. Well, we do something much like that. Symbolically, we generate a MATLAB constant function, which is the constant zero. So I set simfun zero x2 um, here, saying that it's going to be a function of the variable x2. So think of, you know, this is a function of the variable x. So I have y2 as a function of x2, just like you, like you might have y as a function of x. And I'm right here, by putting the zero here, I'm saying this function has the constant value zero for all values of x. Then I go through this series expansion, and I add on uh, this for loop, and I add on term by term in the for loop the, the next term in the series expansion. So I'm going through, i goes from 1 to l, where the zero term in the series is zero. And then when i equals 1, I have the x to the first power term, and, and so on. So I'm writing this as, um, uh, no, no, I have it set up so the i equal 1 term is actually going to be the fifth power term. The i equal 2 term is going to be the uh, fourth power term, and so on. That's the way I set this up. So i goes from 1 to l. We have a polynomial of order l minus 1, and I'm generating, taking the sim symbolic function for y2, and I'm adding this symbolic function to it. Okay, so when i is equal to 1, I'm generating a power. I'm generating the power 2 
x2 raised to the l minus 1 power. So if l is 6, which is the number of terms uh, in the polynomial, number of coefficients in the polynomial, 6 minus 1 saying this is the fifth power of x2. So I have x2 to the fifth power uh, multiplying by whatever the p sub i coefficient is. This is what's coming out of the, the p sub i um, uh, polynomial fit function that I did earlier up here. Here's my p sub i right here, p polyfit. So these are all the coefficients. So I take the coefficient, p, multiply by the appropriate power of x2 raised to some, x2 raised to some power, and this is a symbolic uh, representation, which I add to y2, which is also a symbolic representation. So my new y2 has the new representation, which is the old representation for y2, plus this added term. So when I do that, then I print out what that function is. So when I do that down here, MATLAB gives me this expression right along here. So I have y2 as a function of x2 is given as this, the MATLAB, this is one of the odd things here. I have to figure out how to make it do this differently. But it's taking whatever my coefficient is and working really hard to represent it as a rational number. So it's taking th this coefficient, for example, right here is going to be this number divided by this number. So that's my fractional representation for this term. And so I have 436 here divided by 576. And uh, so that's that coefficient. The x to the fourth power should have a zero coefficient. So that's represented right here. It's this number right here divided by this number right here. And maybe you can tell this has actually a lot more digits in it. So this number divided by that number, the coefficient to the x to the fourth term is approximately equal to zero. This is the x cubed coefficient. Here's the x cubed term should be about equal to negative one over three factorial. And that's this number here divided by this number here, which hopefully gives you that. Then I have my x squared term, which is zero. That's going to be this number here divided by this number here, just like that, my x squared term here. And then this last one um, should be my x term should be about one. So it's this number divided by this number. And maybe you can see that indeed that's going to be about one. And then the constant term is over here, which should be about zero. Now, what I do is I will plot this polyfit approximation. I will plot it on the same curve as I plotted my sine function a, a while back here. Let me show you that. Here on the same curve, I'm plotting now y2 over the range minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And I'm plotting it as a blue dashed line over top my plot for the sine function, which was is as a red solid line. So when I run it and do the plot here somewhere, wherever that plot is, here, right here, here's what I have. And you can see that the plotting the true value of the sine function in red uh, is almost perfectly matched by the dashed blue line right along here, just like that. So that's using MATLAB to do polynomial fits and at the same time to build up symbolic series expansions by using a for loop that sums up the symbolic terms in the MATLAB expression. So with that, uh, see you next time.